everyone, I am going to be doing um, this page from Lost Ocean by Johanna Basford um, today. Now, I have done a few little things before we start. I will just talk you through them. Now, I'm going to be using some pastel for the background, and so I wanted to protect this page. So I've used some sticky notes and pushed them into the spine and then curled them over onto the book to protect this page because I don't want the um, pastel getting over here and I've also then put a piece of plain paper over and taped it on here so we've got a protected area here I've also put a piece of paper behind the page and I have wrapped it around the rest of the book and that will just protect the book from the huge mess that I am very likely to be making now unfortunately I can't get the whole of the book in shot for you so uh, I'm just gonna have to demo as best I can now I'm gonna use my black widow pencils because they come to quite a sharp point because I am going to be coloring in the details here in pencil as well as doing the oops sorry not the tripod as well as doing the background I thought I would start with the background though and uh, and then show you some of the pencil because a lot of this is similar um, it's a, a lot of detail I probably won't do the whole lot I thought I'd show you the background because that's probably a sort of different bit um, for you. And if I do start you off with the, this bit, you can finish it off, I'm sure. So we've got a pad here. This is a cotton wool pad and I've got my pastels. Now I'll just show you what I've got. I've got these um, Mungio soft pastels and I want a seawater colour. But my idea is to do some patches of greeny colour and some patches of bluey colour to mix it up a little bit. I don't really have a bluey green apart from maybe that green. There isn't really anything else and this one is quite dark isn't it? So I thought what I might do is go for some patches of this, some patches of this, maybe some of these blues, a light and a dark and then um, mix mix them up and see what hap what it's like, whether it will work with different colours. I think it'll be more interesting than just doing everything the same colour. If it's a complete disaster, then we may just choose a really dark green like that and go over the whole thing, you know, but I thought I would experiment. So I'm going to move my pastel pad away. Oh, I'll just show you my technique, actually. I've got this new technique that I use for pastels, which is I just rub the sponge on the pastel and then it doesn't make such a mess if compared to scraping them onto the page. But I'm not sure, I might I protect it. I don't want it to get all over my desk. So I'll show you, you just take the pad, oops, and you just rub it like that. You can see it's starting to take it up, but you have to be careful because you can easily um, catch the one next to it. Of course you could pick it up and that would stop that, but I don't want to get it too much all over my hands. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to, you need to take up quite a bit at the beginning because some of it will sort of soak into the um, cotton wool. So I'm going to move that aside. I've got a bit of the darker on here, but I don't think that matters because we are going to be using the darker in places anyway. So I'm just going to put it on, spread it on in a sort of circular motion. And like that, push it into the paper and then get another bit and think about where to go next. Thinking I want a sort of random mix of colour, so it's put a bit there. Now we're going right over the top of the picture. This is fine. Um, firstly, we can erase if we want to. Secondly, a lot of this will be green, so I don't think it's gonna matter. But we'll just um, see how, it, how we get on, really. It's a bit of an experiment. Now I know you can't see right down to the edge of the paper and I have got to put the colour all the way to the edge but I hope you bear with me a little bit and uh, forgive me for not always being quite in shot. So this is the lighter green colour. Like that. Now I don't like wasting this spongy bit so I'm going to put the darker green on that side but I'm going to fold it a bit so I don't get it this green all over my hands. Not sure it matters too much if I get it all over my hands, but now when you're wanting to hold your page down and you're doing pastel, it can be wise to use another piece of cotton because if you get too many greasy fingerprints on the page, 
it can affect the pastel and how it lays down and it can look quite messy so unless you use your fingers to spread it everywhere and then you've got a sort of match you still need to be really careful of fingerprints though they look don't look really nice so it's probably best to make sure you wash your hands if you're going to use get your fingers on there wash your hands first Okay, so those are our greens, I think. What I'm going to do is take this one that was plain, use this one to hold, and use this one for blue. Sorry, the camera isn't coping well with the focusing in and out. I'm just picking a blue. I'm going to go for a, a lightish one first. And because the pastel is fairly easy to blend, we can put it right next to here and just start mixing them up a bit. Now I like it to be fairly even. I've got a quite a big circular pattern there. So I'm going to grab some more and try and go over the top of that to eliminate it. Hopefully I'm not making it work. That's okay. And some more blue. I thought this was a light blue, but it's actually going on quite dark. Let's see how it looks in a bit. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll keep going. Now with pastels, you can layer over the top like you can with pencil. It's nice and quick as well. So that's always an advantage, I think. Now they can be directional, I'm going round and round and you can see these circular shapes, I think I'm just about in shot, you can see it. So I'm aware of that and thinking about whether I want to do that. I'm just going to um, get some darker blue on that side. Or lighter, I'm going to go or lighter. I'm going to go lighter, actually not darker. Oh, now uh, my page is um, going up, so I'm going to go into this corner with some blue. That isn't actually significantly lighter at all, is it? I need some on the edge so I can get into that crease. I'm picking an even lighter shade this time. Sometimes the lighter shades don't show up very well, we'll see. It does, well. it does a little bit. Yeah. And now we've got, can you see we've got a stripe? So we need to try and even this out. We haven't got much colour over there, so I'm going to put some blue over there. I'm just going to hold the page by holding onto that piece. Because you have to be careful because if you don't hold the page down, it can crumple up and then crease the page, and that is not, I'm sure, what anybody wants to do. So I'm going to keep going with some blues over here. Okay. Now there are tools you can buy for applying pastel, um, pan pastels, which are like a almost like a tub of makeup like um, um, pa face powder, they look like that. They come with all sorts of special application tools. And uh, and some people I know also use makeup brushes, not, not brushes, pads and things like that for applying pastel. I don't wear makeup, so I don't have those things. But um, it certainly is an idea for people. I'm going to grab some blue and do um, green, I mean, and do this area because I think it's a little bit lacking in green over here. Now, the joy of this is we can keep working it and adding colours on top of each other until it looks right. And it's so quick. So, you don't, like if we were doing this with layers and layers of pencil, you know, we'd probably be um, hours and hours into it just now. So, the joy of pastel and just the fact that we can get some get it down so fast is brilliant. I've got a 
little gap here as well. I'm just sort of going all over now, just trying to mix everything together. Now, I've never tried blending. I have tried blending solution on pastel. It does work. Um, I'm probably not going to use that today. It's probably going to work without it. Um, I used it once instead of um, fixative on a brush and just um, put blending solution over the top. It's quite fun. Now I've got some darker areas and lighter areas and that is what I want. If you want something a bit smoother then you can keep adding layers until it looks right. I'm going to go back to some blue now. In here. So, you know, it's up to you as to how dark or light you want to do it and how many layers you add. Um, it's quite fun, I find. Quite messy, which uh, for some people is fun and other people isn't. Just getting a bit more blue. A bit blue there. See, if you want to make it more even and you don't want to add more intense colour, you can go for a lighter shade if you have got a lighter shade and use that and that can help you. Now we've got quite a lot of blue splodges up here. We've got a green one here but we haven't got a little bit of blue here. We haven't got much other green so I'm going to get the green and put some there I think. Try and even it out a little bit. And the joy is that it will just apply over the top of what's there and uh, give us a more intense bit of colour. Now I'm thinking about how dark I want this to be, in the sense that if I want to draw some white bubbles or something like that on it, I need it to be, I'm just doing this corner, I don't know if you can even see it, but while I talk, um, if you want to draw bubbles or anything on top of the page, you're going to, with a white pen, you're going to need it quite an intense colour so that it will show up, because white pens need quite a dark background to really show up. I often see people saying, um, I tried this white pen, it doesn't show up on my picture. And you look and they try to apply it onto a sort of very light lavender or a rose pink or something very delicate. It's very difficult to get it to show up on a very pale colour, especially if it hasn't been burnished right into the page. Now, can you see we've got a bit of a mistake here? where I've had a bit of pastel, a big lump, and it hasn't properly um, rubbed in. So I've got my Tombow Mono eraser, and we can get rid of that, hopefully. Can rub it out. Oh. Let's just um, brush that off gently with that. There we go. And then we can put some more colour in there on the top. Hopefully fade it in and get a bit more pass on there. There we go. Now it's gone. Now I had a disaster with a pastel background and fixative, which is worth telling you about while we're just doing some finishing touches. So I put some fixative, it was um I put it over there, Loxley fixative is a good fixative but it smells bad so I was doing it outside and I sprayed it onto my book I put my book flat to apply the spray which is fine and I picked my book up and I flapped it around to try and get rid of the odour in the air big big mistake as I flapped it I tipped it and the fixative was very thick and it um, leaked down the page it ran down the page so I had a running week through my pastel and I'd finished the whole picture so it was a really I really liked the picture and I thought ah but I rescued it I had lots of advice from people I put it on the Facebook group and went help 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 and um, what I did was I gently erased the area which because it was a workable fixative I was able to do that so I gently erased the area and then I um, um, re um, applied some of the pastel 
and I managed to pretty much mask it. I mean, when you know you've got an error on your page, you can always see it. But our own worst critics, it's like, oh, look, that's why I did that. You know, it was bad. But um, I think it was pretty, good, pretty good rescue. So I'm very grateful to everyone that helped me with that and um, rescuing it. So uh, that was good. Right, I'm going to finish there with my pastel. I'm just going to give my hands a rub. There we go. And now, before I colour, I'm not going to just lean on the page because I will start to smudge. I'll get it all up the side of my hand. So I'm going to grab a piece of paper. I'm just going to rip one off my pad here that I happen to have here. And I'm um, start colouring. Now, first thing I'm going to do is these two fish, I don't want them in blue or green. So let's zoom in and see how far we can go in while you can still see the fish. Oops, hang on, we can move across a little. Be careful not to knock my crystals on the floor. And my carpet is not like that. So let's move it across. Here we go. And what I'm going to do with my um, eraser, I'm just going to check there's no debris on the end of it, is just erase the... Um, the pastel on the fish as best I can. I don't want to go over the edge of the fish because I want to try and colour it within the line. I want the background to go all the way up to the edge of the fish so it might be slightly inaccurate but this rubber is great for this sort of thing. Now I have been advised that using a makeup brush, like a blusher brush, is a really good way to get rid of rubbings out and bits of pencil and things, and it sounds great. I put in one on my wish list, but I don't have one, so I do blow a little bit. You need to be careful if you're blowing. Don't want to get any wet in your picture. And um, that didn't work. I'm going to use this some little, because I've got these spongy things, I'm just going to use that to get rid of the rubbings. Right, so we're going, I'm going to do the fish first because they're fun. Um, as I say, there is still a little bit of green and blue on them, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Now, I am going to do them, let me think. I was going to do them orange. I think they will stand out massively, and I'm just going to risk it. I think it'll be okay. So we've got our, um, my um, Black Widows. This is the Ladybug. I'm going to make sure it's sharp because we have got a very small space to fill. Okay, so making sure I lean my hand on the piece of paper. I'm going to do the two fish together so that I remember what I've done because they're symmetrical. So I'm going to put a little bit of this dark colour at the bottom of the fish like this and then fade it up a little bit because I'm going to actually make this um, orange. I'm just going to put a little bit at the bottom of the tail on both sides and on the bottom of there, the fin. Okay, it's quite straightforward. Just trying to look. I think that is the end of a fin as well there. That bit there. I'm going to do that. Now, Lost Ocean is quite intricate to colour. Um, if you aren't good at seeing close up, then you may need to use a magnifying glass for some of the bits. Um, another possibility is to not do too many details. Did that whole fit? If you did that whole fish in one colour, it'd be easier, wouldn't it, than trying to use several. Now we're going to use this pumpkin, and I'm going to go over the top of the red. Oh, and uh, take that up a little bit, up the tail, and there, and the body as well. All the same over the top of the red. Try to avoid the eye, although we might could do that in pen anyway. I'm going to do black eye, but as I say, could do it in a pen rather than a pencil because it's so small. We might do that. Now with the fixative that you've got, you will need to make sure if you are putting fixative on the pastel, that you test it out a little bit first, make sure it works with the pencils that you're using, with the um, pen, if you use pen, that sort of thing. Sometimes it can make colours bleed through, so it all depends on your brand. And the last one we're going for is the toadstool, just to finish it off. Oops, I just 
just knock my pencil sharpener over, sharpen it again. And for this, I'm going to go over every part of the whole thing. So all the way up the whole fin. And I find that helps to blend the colours together and brighten them, make the red a bit more orangey because I don't want it to look too red, just like it's a bit darker. I'm just checking in the lights a bit funny and I'm not zoomed in that much, I can't really see what I'm doing. But do what I say, not what I do, as my mother used to say, if I'm doing it wrong, I'm not filling it in. The idea is to cover everything with this. And try not to go out of the lines. Ha ha. Right. So that's the fish. And I am going to do the eye. I'm just going to grab a pen. I happen to have this Stedler pigment liner near my desk. I'm going to use that. I'll try and make sure I can see because I can't see very well. I'm going to make it completely black. You could. Put some white around the outside, put a white dot in the middle, which I might do, but I need to wait for that to dry before I do anything else. Right, now we have some greenery to do. Now in the um, Black Widows, we have quite a few bluey greens, which is quite useful. Um, I think, let me up I'm going to start with this one, it's getting quite little. This is the um, fan green, this is the darkest green, and I'm going to do some of the bits that I think will benefit from being dark. So firstly, this sort of whole edge bit around the bottom here. Can I think I'm going to zoom in just a bit more? I can push my book up, hold on, bear with me. Oh, I've got something in the way. Pull that down, there we go. So I'm going to start here to colour that in and for this I'm just going to really block it in I don't um, I don't think it's necessary to do any sort of fancy shading or anything <laughs> because it is a thin bit I just want to try and make it look fairly solid now you could easily do this with a pen a fine liner or something I'm just not very good at pens and I don't have a very big variation of colour in my fine liners, so that's uh, that's part of the reason why I'm not keen on using them for this. I did use some fine liners in my original copy of Lost Ocean. Okay, so I'm going to take that all the way. Let's see what can you see? Hold on. There we go. Now this is a symmetrical picture um, and there is a, a tangled reed, weed or grass or whatever it, this is all the way around the very edge of this sort of piece. And I am going to straighten that up, there we go, for all you people that get worried about things that aren't quite straight. Um, I'm going to do this all the way around the edge. Now I'm not going to do that on camera because it's quite boring, you know what I'm doing, I'm just blocking it in. So as I say, I'm going to do that in this fan green all the way around the edge. So the same over here, which is a mirror image, and then up the top as well, you can't see it in the shot. So I'm also going to use this dark green to define some other areas. So I'm going to do it around the edge of here. And I'm going to do these probably as a sort of leafy piece rather than a watery piece so that's why I'm doing them in this green you could do them as if they were a watery bit I mean I don't I mean, Johanna just likes doing little swirls and squiggles doesn't she um, and I'm trying to think whether to do I think I'm gonna leave that there um, I'm just having a look at the top it's similar so any bits like this and anything that's on this main part or joined to it I'll do in this dark color but I'm going to go down to a lighter color for my next bit so this is the toxic green again I'm going to give it a quick sharp my sharpness getting a bit full hopefully it's okay yeah and I'm going to do this sort of stalks and stems with this one and again just blocking it in 
Now another thing about if you do the pastel last, because of all the intricate detail on this page, if we were smudging it on top of this, we might end up smudging it out of the lines or around the page. Now obviously I'm rubbish at staying in the lines, which is what made me think of it, because I've gone white miles out there. But if you like things to be very neat and tidy and staying in the lines, then you're not going to want to be smudging it. And also if you smudge this orange, into, it's not going to look right, is it? Do all these grasses as well. Seagrass? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it grows. I always think seagrass is the sort of stuff that grows on top of sand dunes. This is under the sea. But I think Johanna just makes it up sometimes, which is delightful. Gives us, uh, gives us fun things to do and think about. I'm going to start up here with this one because I can't work out where it's going at the bottom. So that's part of it. Where does it go down there? I don't know. I'm going to do this one first. Sometimes I get a little confused. I think that's that bit. And I'm thinking that might be there. Yeah, and then this one is easier. I can work that one out. And here. Oops. So I'm going to do the stalks as well. So the stalk of this and all these grasses and the stalk of this and similar at the top. Okay, but we I, uh, where we have this to do, what I'm going to do with this is I'm keeping my same colour and we are going to do a little bit of shading on this one. So I'm going to take this part the way up the leaf. Now this one has got a stem, so I'm going to colour in the stem. This one I'm going to do the bottom. And this one again, just the sort of bottom part. That uh, this one here is obviously symmetrical. I will keep it the same. Now, I know some people don't worry about keeping things symmetrical, it's up to you. I like it to be, it doesn't mean to say that's the right way to do it. Now, I'm going to grab my Everglade and do the rest of the details, and I'll just show you. So this is the um, Everglade. And I'm going to start by doing this and finishing off these. Now this is quite a bluey green, which I think is good because it pulls it all together to match with the background. Now what you could do around here is some more um, bubbles, big bubbles, small bubbles, different size bubbles around the um, this central plate area. Or you could just leave it as it is. I'm going to do some of these little bubbles and then I shall have a think about what to do with the outside. I might, I have a template for a circle that I can use for bubbles. If you don't have a template, you can draw round things. I don't know, my stationery drawer has a few round things in like tape. Um, my pencil sharpener isn't round. Um, some people's are though. Um, it's usually tape or a glue, a really thick paper glue or something like that. So that's those leaves. These I'm going to try to do a little bit darker and fade it a little bit. Can you see? I'm hoping you're in shot. Yes, you are. That's good. And the same with this one. And then with the petals, the leaves, I mean, I might do a similar thing. I'm not going to use the other green in this set. I've got a, it's a bit yellowy. I don't really want to introduce a yellowy green into this. Now you could do some of this in different colours. But I'm quite happy with all the greens down here at the bottom. However, when we go to the top, we have um, here, we have corally items. Now I think I'm going to do those in blue. So we keep our blue and green. Let's just push this back up. So the only thing that's orange is our is a different colour is our fish. I really like the idea of the fish standing out um, differently to all the rest. So the corals I'm going to do in blues. Now we've got three blues. I think I might stick to the darker blues. Now see these, all the, all the plants will be the same as we've been doing at the bottom. So it's really only the, um, 
the sort of coral bits that I'm going to demo up here for you. There aren't huge amounts, but I think what I'm going to do, is that the darkest one? Uh, no. Yeah, so I'm going to use the darkest blue, which is the zephyr blue, to do the edges. So you see on this coral we've got this sort of line here. And then this will be the same as we've done with the green. So with the green we took our dark one and did the edge, this sort of defined some areas like the, the very outside. And I'm going to do a similar thing. So here, I shall do dark and here. And this one, remembering that again it's symmetrical. So keeping both sides the same. And this one's a bit more um, complex, but I'm going to fill in all this area in my dark blue. Like this. And what else do we have? We have this one, and I'll do this edge. I was thinking this looks like a blancmange. I don't know why. I don't know if you all even know what that is. But <laughs> it's like a cold pudding. Um, now this one, these are interesting because they're loops, but they've got leaves on. So I'm going to not do those blue. I'm going to leave those to do green. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this rather thick bit in this darker colour. Blamond, yes. I think we didn't used to have it that often in my house. We used to have cold custard more so than blancmange. Occasionally had a strawberry one there, that's fine. Um, now this one's a little bit odd, we've got a very small edge and then I'm going to do that bit. Now that's all the sort of corally bits, obviously I haven't done that side but you'll know what to do. But we do have these two areas here which look a little bit like water and I'm just going to do these lines in this dark colour. Like that. And obviously I will do that the same on the other side. And then I will grab my slightly lighter blue, which is this one. It is called Starry Night. It's got such lovely names. And sort of fill in the gaps as it were. So I have to sort of decide what I'm doing. So for this one, I'm going to go darker at the top and then just fade it down a little bit. Now the joy with fading it down is that you don't need to worry about white paper because it's not white underneath anyway. So uh, you can fade it down and it will, you'll see the green or blue that's underneath. And it might have been useful had I put a blue under this bit. I'm going to do the same for this one, ignoring the detail on there. The detail will show through and look pretty, but I'm sort of not going to worry about colouring in all those detail bits. And that one. And here. So it's really the same thing. It's going a little bit darker and then lighter. This one's quite small. I'm just going to block that in. But these I think I should try and fade. If these spaces are too small for you, just block it in. It doesn't really matter. I don't know if you can really see the um, fade anyway, because it's such a small space. So that's that one. And I'll just do the same with the rest. I might do that loop there in the dark like I have on that one. I think I will. I'll just grab it quickly. And then I'll probably block in that one and fade those bits. So that's that one. And then, um, yeah, we've got these two bits. And I'm just going to go a little bit darker at the bottom. There. And fade it up a bit. Like that. Now it looks all quite blocky in blue at the minute. But we can always put in some white highlights if we want to. I'm going to get a white pen in a minute and just show you what I am going to do. So this is just fading out towards the end. Like 
that. So I'm going to grab my um, Sakura Jelly Roll and what I will do with this bit, because we had those dots, I'll probably do the dots along here. See how they can show up quite well on the dark blue and here maybe and then any other patterns I might decide to do. I'm going to also show you the effect of the white by the fish because we have some air bubbles here. Now I'm going to fill in the whole thing in white because it's very small it won't show up otherwise but hopefully you can see the bubbles. You can add in more bubbles if you want to around different bits. I mean there, there are more over here. I'm not going to do them all. But I'm just going to demonstrate to you. If you don't have a white pen, it's a little bit tricky. Um, I have heard, though, that if you have a white watercolour pencil, you can damp the tip and it will give you white dots. Now, my blue has gone pink up here because this particular blue pen um, shows up pink when it has a white because it but they're just because of the ink colors so that is a bit of a nuisance but you can go over it a few times and hope that it'll cover it and there are some pens that do cover and some someone um, told me about some special liquid which does cover things much better doesn't take on the color I did look at that but the problem is it came in a bottle you'd have to use a brush and that's not, I'm not too messy for that, but it could be useful for people who are neater. So that's us really. What I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna finish this picture and take a photo for you so you can see the finished thing, the whole thing. I should obviously, I'll do a zoomed out picture as far as I can so that you can have a look and see and what you think and whether it's something that you want to have a go at. But I, I have never done a page like this the, this book belongs to page with a big background so I just thought it would be a lot of fun I saw someone else had done one and I really liked it so I just wanted to have a go so uh, I hope you liked it too and uh, and it might have given you a few ideas thank you very much for watching and happy colouring <laughs>